You're listening to Simparts Radio, episode number 186, and welcome back to the Enneagram Hell series. Today, we're breaking down Enneagram Type 3. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is a place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. I'm pumped that you are here because we're in the middle of the Enneagram Health series, the place to learn about your Enneagram type and how you can use it to create nourishing life rhythms that last. Because what I believe about health is that if it is not you, and if it does not work for you, or it's not realistic, it will never work long term. Because what I really believe that if health is not realistic for you or what you're doing isn't realistic and practical, you will never do it long term. So we have to learn to create practical life rhythms that just make health who you are, not something you do. And that's my mission with this Any Health series. And I'm super pumped you're here. So This week on the show, I dove deep into Enneagram Type 3, the strengths and weaknesses, and how we can create nourishing life rhythms based on that. But today, I wanted to interview a real Enneagram 3 and get her perspective on what I talked about on that show, and also just her own personal hurdles and struggles with being Enneagram 3, and ultimately how she walked herself to the healthiest version of an Enneagram 3. I also asked her what encouragement she could leave us with what encouragement she could leave you with and advice that she could give you as you walk on this journey of becoming the healthiest version of an Enneagram type three. And then I wanna know, how can we be more encouraging uh, those of us who are not type threes to you? So stay tuned for the show as I interview a dear friend. Her name's Rebecca Johnson. Rebecca is the women's ministry director at Veritas Church in Iowa City, Iowa. You can learn more about Rebecca and the work that she does. She has a many amazing Bible studies. She is one of my favorite souls that I've ever met, and um, I definitely encourage you to learn more about her and the work that she does. You can learn more at veritascommunity.org. I will make sure and link all of that up in the show notes, which, speaking of the show notes, if you want a free download for type threes and you want to learn more about creating these nourishing life rhythms, head on over to the show notes and grab that. It's completely free and I think it will be beneficial for you. So to find the show notes, head on over to simpleartswellness.com backslash 186 to grab all of that. And you can get the downloads for every other Enneagram type if you would like to, um, to work through those or to just understand more about each specific type. Okay, this series has been so fun, and I have been loving the interviews. So let's get right to the show and welcome Rebecca. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Uh, You've been such a joy and a light in my life, and I already shared this in the intro, but we kind of met unexpectedly, and yeah, you were just a great and inspiring, fun person to be around, Um, and I'm always leave so encouraged by you. So I know everyone's going to love this conversation. So thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Well, the three in me doesn't want to feel any pressure, but just to enjoy this conversation <laughs> right. with you. But no, I'm, I'm excited too. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a lot of fun. So my husband is an Enneagram three, like hard Enneagram three. I used to think that I was a three, but I'm leaning more towards like a two. And I feel like my wings are just really on both sides of that. So I kind of relate to the Enneagram three. I see the perspective, but at the same time, I'm excited to see a hard Enneagram three, because you said you were a hard three, right? Yes, I, I believe so. But even more so, uh, my husband very much affirms this test and the three in me, he's a, he's a counselor, a therapist. And so he uses it a lot and he thinks I might be the world's strongest three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your husband then? Oh, a two. It's a two. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're like the opposite, right? Like in our family. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I feel like I feel like you and I had talked about the marriage dynamic and Uh the first time we had coffee and I remember picking up on similarities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Okay. So I'm excited though to learn from you because one thing in all of this and why I'm excited about the Enneagram is because I feel like it helps us to understand people in a new way. Um, and I feel like even like when we talk about marriage, like I'm like, oh, that's just the way you work. Like you don't work the same way as me. You're not seeing the same things that I'm seeing. And so this is a lot of fun. So for people who there's going to be people on the show who are threes and who aren't, uh, but want to relate to threes better. So I'm excited to see what you have to say. 
But to start with, can you give me a brief overview about the Enneagram 3 and what you love about it and maybe what you struggle with? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, So the three, we are the achievers um, and our, would you call them, so our wings are Mm -hmm. two, which is a helper. And remind me what a four is. I don't know. I only know two because that's what I'm. Right. Me too, and that's what I see in myself. And um, anyway, so we're the achiever. And because I have a two wing, I am actually called the charmer, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't exactly excite me. But um, so there you <laughs> go. That's something I don't like about it from the start. But we very much um, desire to be valuable mm-hmm. and to be successful. And we feed off of affirmation and success. Um, I love it. Be- I, I like this because it gives me an, invita- an invitation to be introspective, mm-hmm. to humbly learn about myself, and then to try to forget about myself and go about right. my days with hopefully my strengths leading the way. Right. Okay. So as an Enneagram 3, when I kind of done this research, Enneagram 3s, I don't want to label this, but you tend to say more on the surface, maybe, you know, like distract um, yourself in success and achieving goals and, and doing things Mm -hmm. like you're very active people and you're go-getters, which can be used in such Mm -hmm. great value in life. But at the same time, like, is, is it difficult for an Enneagram three to like learn their true, their true self? And, and and is it true that Enneagram threes struggle with their identity? Yeah. Well, here's, here's another thing I love about the Enneagram is how it maps onto my life and my situation. So I'm mid thirties, elementary age kids. Um, and I guess in a way you could say like, I'm in my second career. I was Mm -hmm. a nurse for 10 years and now I'm in full-time ministry and do um, like leadership development and public speaking within the church. What I would say is that when I research the achiever. And I see how they stay at the surface. I see mm-hmm. what they are like in their weaknesses where they are deceitful, um, competitive and live under like this burden of, of achieving. Mm-hmm. Um, I can look back at a season in my life when sadly that was so true. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my husband and I actually were both in a season of unhealth and it got pretty bad. And we were both in a season of burnout and went through like a spiritual discipline, if you will, like Mm -hmm. a time of spiritual discipline completely, um, found newness through a very long road of just some suffering. I feel like since then, when I look at the weaknesses listed on a typical write up on three, I look at those, I'm like, I don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back there. And so, um, with the help of lots of people and Mm -hmm. powerful God, I, I so hope that I don't stay surface anymore, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that I, that I want to be, um, I think, especially in my relationships with other people that I really want to, um, be committed to the people in my life and committed to authenticity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the Enneagram is cool and I mean, we're kind of going deep right away, which is awesome, but I think that there has to be almost like, and, and every Enneagram that type that I've studied so far it's almost like we all need to go back down to this like deep self-awareness to regain our Mm -hmm. identity. You know, and I think the Enneagram is powerful because of the identity in Christ that it shows and, and how each of us needs that and, and, um, desires that in a different way. But Enneagram threes are, you know, like you said, work to be loved, right? Like do Mm -hmm. things to achieve and have this image, and I'm, I'm not an Enneagram three, so I feel like I'm labeling you. So I have to be careful hey, what I say. No, it's okay. I will I will nicely tell you that you're wrong, but okay. in a way where you where you'll still affirm me. Okay. Like me. <laughs> but um, there's this very like outward appearance that threes like yes. to to put on and um, image conscious, is very how image it. conscious, and mm-hmm. and. You know, like, again, you have a lot of great skills. Like when we even just like go back to the health perspective of a three, uh, it, it has been shown in the research of Enneagram that threes have the least emotional attachment to eating, huh. the least emotional attachment to exercise. Like Enneagram threes mm-hmm. tend to look at those things in the right reasons. Like Enneagram threes are the mm-hmm. most likely to pick up healthy food. They're the most yeah. likely to stay active without having it attached to health, which I think is really awesome and very rare. 
um, and, the, yeah. and the scheme of life today. But at the same mm-hmm. time, you have this massive image conscious human, right? Who really mm-hmm. strives to put on a good facade and put on a good face. How in, in your unhealthy mm-hmm. seasons, because I don't, I mean, I, I look at you and think you are a really healthy three. I mean, all of us, right, have some work to do at some level, but yeah. how, how have you overcome this image conscious person mm-hmm. and, yeah, and really sure. let your true self out? Yeah. Okay. So when I look back at my past, you know, I don't, I'd be curious what the Enneagram pros say about like adolescence mm-hmm. and, you know, if, if people should even be labeled in adolescence, but I was very image conscious, but it was at a very surface level. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually was obsessed with food and exercise as a teenager. However, when I think about it, it was linked to largely, it was linked to how I would perform in sports. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty Mm -hmm. classic achiever. Um, however, I, I do feel super free Mm -hmm. in how I eat and exercise. Um, yeah, free is the best way to say it. I don't know that that's all to my credit though, or Mm -hmm. even just like as signs of health image conscious to me is so much more than what we physically look like, you know, Mm -hmm. weight, fashion, uh, beauty, anything like that. I actually think it's a bigger beast than that. And so when I say image conscious, I think I on in unhealth, I am constantly thinking about how I am being perceived Mm -hmm. and doing what I can to make it be a positive thing Mm -hmm. that can get unhealthy really quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with, with food and exercise though, I mean, a couple ways that I in health that I, I would say, I think of those things in my life right now. So like I said, my job is, is in the local church and part of my job description is, um, leadership development. Well, for me, for whether it's because I'm a three or because I'm just me, that just means like tons of really organic shepherding and being in people's Mm -hmm. lives. It means just like having a ton of relationships. So linking that to health, I link my exercise in with um, my job all the time. So a way for me to keep exercise healthy is that I exercise with Mm -hmm. the women that I lead. So I go on walks and I go on jogs and I go to the gym and I hike and it's a way to keep it healthy because it keeps it, it keeps my eyes off of myself while Mm -hmm. I'm exercising. So maybe I'm achieving exercise, but it's like a little, um, guardrail, like a, like you would see on the street. Like it keeps me out of the ditch of unhealthy exercise. Same thing with eating. I eat out with other women all the time, whether it's at a coffee shop or lunch or having women over to my house for a meal. And again, when I'm doing it with somebody else, the purpose becomes so much more mm-hmm. than just physical health. It becomes emotional, spiritual, you know, talk about wholeness. Yeah. And I think that's such yeah. a great gifting and something that threes should own more into about how to yeah. just incorporate because you're already so emotionally detached from food in a healthy way that you can do it and you can use it for the purpose of living a greater mission, right? Like using it as a mission field. Um, versus letting it be the mission of your life, which so many other people live for, which is so damaging. So you kind of mentioned this before, but like you're, you're in the market of ministering to other women, like giving and in a way that there's, there's a success to that, right? Like there, there's a goal Mm -hmm. to that, which, which is Mm -hmm. healthy and how God created you. But at the same time, how do you come back in and find yourself in the midst of working with so many other people, like, how do you stay, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you stay true to yourself? Because I think this is a battle for threes. This is fascinating to me that threes are in the heart triad. So they're major feelers. Yeah. But I feel Mm -hmm. like you wouldn't always know it. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, because I think I've read like we're people of action. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that makes us not look like we're a feeler, Mm -hmm. but we're just doing something while we feel. Right, right, right. (laughs) And so I think I'm just like always, I'm always moving forward, but I'm just feeling big things while I do those things. But how do you deal um, with all those feelings? I mean, what in your perspective is health? I think what a, a helpful question to ask threes, what a fun conversation, like to sit in a room of threes and talk about um, what, what is the definition of success for you? Mm -hmm. Um, and is it a healthy definition? You know, so in my line of work, a success cannot be something as objective as a certain number of women come to the Bible study Mm -hmm. class that I put on, or that after a conference, a certain number of women like 
quote me online or Mm -hmm. tag me and give me affirmation. Those are incredibly unhealthy goals Mm -hmm. and, and would just get us into our places of unhealth very quickly. However, I also think that staying away from goals just because you're scared of being um, driven for success, I I don't think that that has to happen either. Mm -hmm. I I think that maybe starting broad and moving to the narrow with goals is good. So it's like broadly, I was just thinking of this this morning, just because we're starting off a new semester at our church, which means new classes of, of different sorts. And um, I feel like I'm I'm reaching for some barometer of am I achieving, mm-hmm. am I successful in this season? And that's that's a mixed bag of motives. Um, but I think I I just wanted I needed to pop back up to forty thousand feet and say, mm-hmm. okay, what is my goal here? Well, my goal should be the same goal as like what we set for the whole church. So to make disciples, that means mm-hmm. to make learning followers of Jesus. Okay, broadly, am I doing that? you know, under that, then within women's ministry, am I creating environments for women to be in authentic relationship with each other and with God, you know, and, and then sometimes as I zoom in, that can get me into some of the weeds. Um, and so if I start seeing some size of signs of unhealth for me, so that would especially be, um, pressure. Mm-hmm. If I, if I feel like I'm collapsing under this burden that I put on myself, I, I don't really need anyone else I wouldn't know if anyone else was putting burdens on me because I'm so consumed with my own, the pressure I put on myself. Mm -hmm. Or if I hear myself say something competitive towards someone else, that would be a sign of unhealth. And so then that's an invitation for me to pop back up to the goal that really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, am I serving the women of Veritas Church? And am I serving them specifically in the goals that that I've set up. So that's a little bit of a, yeah, yeah. Of some yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic because I love the question that you ask. And I think it's really important for threes and a lot of other types just to ask, what is your definition of success? Because I can imagine a three can get very consumed in, and what others view of success is and trying to reach those measures and standards mm-hmm. very easily, just because by nature you see mm-hmm. an achievement, like you see a bar and you naturally want to reach that. Um, yeah. Yeah, And so, like you said, kind yeah. of reevaluating what does that look like for you outside of what it looks like maybe for others or what others have set. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that's probably a great way of coming back to to really uncovering yourself um, and, and yeah. really knowing yourself because of the research that I did, like in, in the unhealthy parts of a three, they easily can lose themselves in, yes. in, in the race and the chase of, of whatever they're striving for. And then you combine mm-hmm. that with one of the biggest fears, right, is shame for a three yep. Um, yep. and shame yep. and which can which can even sometimes be masked as embarrassment um, because shame is mm-hmm. also a shameful word just to even say. Yeah. So yep. in yep, your absolutely. healing, how, how do you practically deal with shame? Yeah. OK, well, I don't know if this uh, would be a confrontational thing to say or not, but I sometimes wonder if if for people to feel shame even for just a brief moment or time or season, if it's almost like uh, hitting rock bottom Mm -hmm. and, and should be something to be embraced. Um, you know, one of my favorite quotes, um, goodness, I should know who says my favorite quote, right? Tozer, (laughs) a guy named Tozer, I think says, I've learned to kiss the wave that throws me against the rock of ages. Mm. Um, and so if we have an opportunity, if, if shame rears its head, my thought actually is not to shut it up, but just for a brief moment, lean in and listen to that shame. So once again, going back to what I would say was hitting rock bottom for me a couple of years ago, or or let's for the sake of this context, this conversation, let's just say like when my three um, was transformed mm-hmm. or was regenerated into a healthier way, um, I did feel shame, you know, and it's what it was, was it was kind of at the end of season one of church ministry for my husband and I, I enough things came to a head where essentially all of my, um, my goals were wrong and the appearance that I had put together, you know, it became obvious that it was a house of cards. Mm. Um, and I, in, in so many ways got, got essentially called out. Another way to think of it too, is I was a mile wide. I was 10 miles wide with relationships and productivity and action, but 
but I was an inch deep. And, and in that inch, there is no awareness of self. Yeah. There was, there was what I wanted to be. There was what I thought I should be. There was what I thought people wanted me to be, but there was very little knowledge of self. There was very little true identity in that. Mm -hmm. Um, and man, when I felt the shame and kind of like looked at myself in the mirror accurately, and I believe that was just very much with, with God's help, it was wonderful for me because it marked a point of awareness, which then led to an opportunity for newness. Mm. And, and you know what? It's not like the next day I was a healthy three, not at all. It was, man, Alexa, it was years. Mm -hmm. I think I could look back. I'm like six months after that was a certain point where I'm like, wait a minute. I think, I think I'm feeling healthier. I think some thinking has been re has been corrected. Yeah. And then six months after that, and then six months after that, you know, and so man, quickly, I would say 18 months to two years of like being on an operating table mm -hmm. and, and having unhealth pulled out of me mm -hmm. and, and God making newness in me. Yeah. So I do not remember your question. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I, I think that, I mean, I think it's, I love what you said about like the self-awareness created like this newness that God had desired for your life. Mm -hmm. And you needed to hit that place of rock bottom mm -hmm. in order to see that. And I think sometimes for threes that possibly it's such a narrow vision of what you're trying to achieve. Like you said, it's like a mile wide and, and an inch deep that sometimes mm -hmm. you have to like recenter and refocus yes. on like who you Absolutely. are and what you were purposed mm -hmm. here for outside of mm -hmm. all the achievements that you think you need or you've already achieved. Right. Um, yeah. Which can be really hard, but there has to be this like. I feel like for a healthy three and some of the recommendations that I gave, because in the previous podcast, I just talked specifically about just lifestyle implications, creating nourishing rhythms for a three. And you can correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, if these are not correct. But one of the things was that I feel like threes just need time alone, solitude and prayer yes. with Jesus, yeah. because I think it's so easy to get lost in all the things that a three should be doing. Uh, yep. Rather than just remembering whose they are and whom they were created for and their purpose Absolutely. here. Um, and I like yep. how you said, like, redefining your vision of success, I think, is huge and could be such a great journaling point for that. Yeah. Um, nope. I agree completely. Yeah. So when when we talk about how you got healthy and 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 maybe something else that I, I love that you said was that this is a process. Enneagram threes are notorious for liking the fast thing, right? Like yes, when we look at the fast track, the fast track, right? Um, even cutting corners sometimes or like mm -hmm. in the health world, they're often the people who are like on the protein bandwagon, the fastest mm -hmm. diet, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so you said it was slow and that has to be somewhat excruciating for a three. And this is probably honestly where I relate most to a three is I like to get things done and I like to do them efficiently and quickly and, and hit that point and slowing down <laughs> and being yep. slowed down by God is incredibly frustrating at times, mm -hmm. valuable. Yep. But how, how did you, mm -hmm. how did you walk yourself through this process and give yourself grace? Because grace is also another mm -hmm. struggle. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I was greatly helped by the person I'm closest to and that's my husband and, mm -hmm. um, him being a, a two, which is a helper. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a bonus. Right. <laughs> I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what ditch I'd be in without that, but, um, it took us going through this restart together, the season of discipline, um, running shoulder to shoulder, walking shoulder to shoulder together and we made some, there are some very big practical choices you have to make sometimes. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when, when our time of ministry was over with, this was in Colorado and, um, because of our unhealth, um, because of a lot of identity, um, lies that we were living, we made a very big choice that we were not going to chase a career in that moment, but that we were going to build in a season um, that might have looked foolish to the world, but we were going to actually build in an intermission season for our life. Mm -hmm. So our we had three young boys. The youngest one was only one. And uh, my husband had opportunity to right away send out more resumes uh, to different churches. He even had another church right away call him and, and offer him a job uh, right away. And I remember exactly where we stood. And he was like, Rebecca, we are not, we're not going to jump right back in. We are going to learn. 
this mm-hmm. lesson. We're going to relearn of God's love for us, and we're going to sit tight, even if it just about kills us. Mm-hmm. Man, Alex, the faith that that takes, um, it was just, it was a faith opportunity. And what that meant is that we had to look at our priorities and make sure that money was pretty far down the list mm. because we we were not going to jump into that. I, I'm a nurse by trade, and we chose that I would just work part-time instead of full-time so that there was margin. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, th- you think of a good old piece of paper that we rarely use anymore, right? And you think of the space to the left of the little right. pink line, yeah. that's your margin. And then, and then you have an even fainter margin on the other side. The reason that's there is to catch if anything has to fall off. Mm-hmm. You know, the times in life when, when, when you have overbooked or crisis happens or loss happens or anything, you have that room, but you mm-hmm. shouldn't always be filling life to the brim. And so that was something we had to relearn was building in margins. Um, and what that does is it, it reminds you of just your very nature as a human, whether you're a three or a two or a nine or the next test that comes up in a couple of years, like you have limits and to a three, especially you cannot just achieve every minute of every single day, but you need to just be Mm -hmm. And, and in those moments of quiet and pulling back, man, I would say that's one of the biggest things that has, is now built into my weeks that wasn't there a couple of years ago. And that is just, um, like you said, pulling back and and being alone and, Mm -hmm. um, fighting against that temptation that, cause when we achieve, we feel better about ourselves. You know, when we're affirmed, we we just stand taller Mm -hmm. and there, there is some good that can come from that, but there are some, some Mm -hmm. ditches Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And I think that's just like a huge overall lifestyle habit that people could, like you said, just schedule into their everyday life. Like just creating margin for a three Mm -hmm. would be huge. I kind of talk about like sabbatical seasons and like, um, just having, I, I feel like just taking a Sabbath for a three is, is intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's something that we're called to, uh, f- for our good too, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, a threes can really value from that. So just continuing on with some like basic nitty gritty lifestyle practices that mm-hmm. maybe could be beneficial, beneficial for a three. So I'm going to list some that I, I have said, and I want to make sure that I'm on the right track. So I want you to add to this or take it away or like affirm okay. or whatever you want to do with these. So like when we specifically talk about diet and exercise for a three, I think it's important that threes are active in nature. And I think it's great to stay active. Like I think that there is something that comes alive with a three that's active. So not forgetting Mm -hmm. the activity and knowing that that's good too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think by nature, so often achievers are, um, they're with people a Mm -hmm. lot. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that that can swallow us whole mm-hmm. um, but if we're carrying the burdens of other people so often. And man, nature um, is is the best to help reduce that anxiety, to give perspective, to find mm-hmm. refreshment probably mm-hmm. more than anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another one for threes is to enjoy the experience of what food can bring and the people that you eat it with. Um, yeah. You know, like I, I think threes, I don't want to say that they elude pleasure, but I think that they, they tend to forget <laughs> about pleasure uh-huh. um, and the act to achieve, like their achievement is their pleasure. When, um, what I'm trying to say is you could mm-hmm. have pleasure in the everyday. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, and I think it's important to have threes review their values. You kind of said it, redefine your idea of success, but really coming back to your values, um, and making sure that your goals that you have set are healthy goals. Because you can't take yep. the goals out of the three, but what we can do is realign them and make sure that they are going in the direction of the things that you do value. Like, I think mm-hmm. threes get off track when they are so focused, so unbalanced, you know, like mm-hmm. so yes. focused on work that they forget that their family is a value or their faith is a value. Um, and mm-hmm. they've let that slide being so focused on something else. And then I think one of the best ways for me to find to pursue health with food is to make sure it's not all about me Mm -hmm. and me feeling. So, you know, an achiever, we can, we, any lane of life, we can find a way to achieve. So whether it's, um, eating in a healthy way or eating in a way that's easy on the budget, and maybe I have like a goal Mm -hmm. financially to feed my family for this much, this many hundreds of dollars a month or whatever. And when I get so focused on my goal, it, it's just covering up a lot of selfishness. And so it's good for me, you know, once a week 
twice a week, I'm making something that maybe doesn't actually feed my achiever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) pun intended, but it serves my family. Mm. And so I I try to pull in my wing of helper Mm -hmm. of of number two. And I think like I, one of my boys is one of the funnest kids to eat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Excuse me. One of the funnest kids to feed because he loves food. And so I like, like he kind of has like, we call it a rich kid palate. Yeah. He loves good, good salmon. Mm. And so I'm just like, Every now and then, I'm just going to surprise him with like good salmon, and then I'm going to sit there and watch him eat it, and he's right. going to talk about it every bite. <laughs> that you is know, the and best. it's just like it, it's good because it makes my goal something subjective rather mm-hmm. than something measurable. Mm-hmm. And that that fights against um, some unhealthy bends in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another one that I wrote was um, working out alone at some level too can be healthy because it creates the space in your life um, that you don't have to perform. Another thing was taking yourself off the quote unquote stage that a lot of threes put themselves on, um, finding activities oh. outside of the stage. And mm-hmm. I mean, you actually work on a physical stage, but a lot of threes don't have like the quote unquote stage, but there is the stage, this mask that threes mm-hmm. tend to wear. Um, and it is okay to come off of that and just do mm-hmm. yep. without others seeing mm-hmm. or recognizing yep. that. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. I would also say, yeah. why not? Why not get on the stage without your mask? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, just I, I unmask think whatever. Yourself. Yeah, just e- even if even if you are up front, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, not that there's styles of of public speaking. Not that I, I'm I'm sure somebody has marketed that, but I I hope to just share to a group of 500 that what the way I would to a group of five, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and I would rather risk oversharing rather than put it on the mask and making everyone else in the room think that I've got it all together. Right. A hundred percent. And you have done so much healing work to get yourself there. And it, it shows, you know, people see that and the honesty in that and threes are such lovable, fun, attractive people to be around. Um, it's just, it's doing that in your real real self rather than the false Mm -hmm. sense of who you think you need to be to make other people like you. And I think the last one I put is I feel like threes put a lot of, I don't want to say maybe unnecessary tension, but just a lot of tension on themselves. And Mm -hmm. just in daily life, we see threes with a, um, a deep tension and it's hard for them to unwind. Um, because I think partly threes are just so active in nature, but having some ways to unwind, to having some ways to to fill yourself up rather than constantly kind of like fixing problems or, or trying to achieve all these things, like taking the time to fill yourself back up. Like I mentioned, like taking a Sabbath for a three is really valuable. But what are some other things that you do that really fill you back up? Mm, well, unwinding and then filling myself back up, I I don't know that I have a good answer for those as if they're the same thing. I mean, but unwinding, I, I mean, it's not a real deep thought. I, I like to watch a little bit of TV before bed. And for me, that's actually really good that I don't just, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a workaholic and I don't feel that temptation, like maybe a classic one would. Um, but because there's no end to relationships, yeah. you know, I could fill every night with that. I think that even just I'm learning margins because my kids are now older. They're not mm-hmm. just toddlers that I can just put in a bedroom, but I have this ongoing relationship with a 10 year old who has questions. And so unwinding, sometimes the best way for me to unwind is to linger in their room at night. That's something I'm learning to do, you know, is to, (laughs) instead of just sticking to our bedtime routine that we've had since they were a baby, because gosh, darn it, I'm going to achieve good sleepers. Um, I just lay in bed and I listen to maybe a topic that I have no idea what they're getting at, but I'm just going to lay there and listen. Uh So that's, that's one, um, unwinding Uh I've, I've learned and, and to fill back up. Yeah. I would repeat, just force yourself to have time alone. Mm -hmm. Um, force yourself, you know, essentially it's like starve your areas of unhealth, Mm -hmm. absolutely starve it, starve your sin, starve your stubbornness or your rebellion. Um, so that you know who you truly are, you are not the sum of your achievements, Mm -hmm. you know? And I just think that's the, that has freed me up more than anything is I just, it's not, I didn't come up with this quote, but who was it that said, you don't listen to yourself in a bad hour. Don't listen to yourself first thing in the morning, but preach to yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And just seizing those first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds of the day has helped me with that. Yeah. You know, so for me, the, the, before my eyes are even open in the morning, I have just adapted this um, habit of just crying out to God. And it's not like this dramatic, like, oh no, there's another day, but it's also not like a, yay, I'm mm-hmm. awake. It's just the first mumble or exhale of my day is Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, and it just reminds me that what I really need to achieve is eternal rest. And that's been given to mm-hmm. me from God, you know, and then trying to, at the end of the day, I think this is like a book on humility um, by somebody. Um, at the end of the day, look, you know, scrolling through all the achievements of the day and just deflecting them back up, mm-hmm. whether that's giving the thanks to God for them or thinking of how many people helped achieve that, even if that achievement is getting the laundry folded and put away. Like, man, I'm thankful for a husband who switched that load over for me, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. Yeah, that was gold, Rebecca, to say to preach to yourself first before you listen to yourself. Um, yeah. It's so good. Okay. So it kind of goes along. We just have a couple more questions. What grace do you feel like Enneagram threes need to give themselves? Oh, hmm. I think to become, okay. It's unrealistic to be the best at everything. Mm. That seems like such a, of course we, of course everyone knows that. Right. And then I think, wait a minute, do I know that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, do I really believe mm-hmm. that? I would love again to sit in a room with a bunch of hardcore threes and be like, do you actually know that? Like, mm-hmm. even if you did become the best in your field, you will not remain the best in your field. Right. You know, and, and the little things that we even strive to be the best at. Um, I mean, it's almost comical. Like, like the best meal planning that, that, that can be something that we at the end of the day, hang our hat on. And I just think that there's not a lot of freedom. There's not a lot of grace when we are trying to distinguish ourselves from others Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. the point of like, it is, it is noble and it is good. My dad used to always say excellence in everything, girls, excellence in everything. However, he said it and his tone of voice had so much grace in it. Mm -hmm. And so I think largely from him, I have I have found a well of grace that motivates me to, yes, like be excellent. You know, don't live in the tyranny of the urgent. Don't spread yourself so thin that, um, you know, mm-hmm. that things are falling off into the margins. Yeah. Um, per- perfection has already been achieved for me through mm-hmm. God. Yeah. But ex- excellence can be my response to him. And when I'm not excellent, when I hit a limit, when I don't handle a relationship right, or I burn the dinner, laugh at myself. I mean, there's, there's, there's this woman at, at church who a couple times now has been like, good grief, Rebecca, don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, she thinks something. honestly, it's like, I actually, it takes me a couple minutes to, pers- to be teachable in what she says. Uh-huh. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It means a lot to a three though. I mean, yeah, you, you do strive very, very mm-hmm. diligently which can be good Mm -hmm. and it can be unhealthy. Right. So, okay. Well, yeah, we care very deeply. Like Mm -hmm. you said earlier, like that's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, it's not just objective goals. Like everything we do comes from our heart. Mm -hmm. Everything's personal, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You take feeling so much and you put it into action. You do something. Yeah. Yeah. We can be hot messes, but man, we can be super fun. Right. Right. Yeah. So how could other people that aren't Enneagram threes encourage a three. Yeah. You should tell them not to take themselves so seriously. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, you should gently cup their face and redirect their eyes Mm -hmm. every now and then and tell them that they are not the end all be all, but that you appreciate and acknowledge what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, you should help them laugh. Um, you should mix up their routine every now and then because it will refresh their soul mm. very much mm-hmm. to um, to just remember to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I ended the podcast where I talked about this stating, you are not loved because of what you do, but because of who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would add to that, whose you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So good, Rebecca. You have been such a wealth of knowledge. So excited that 
I hope this can just encourage so many threes out there um, and really just give them a little extra pep in their step to uh, live their true self um, and kind of come out of the shell of who they think that they need to be and Mm -hmm. um, just be. Um, Okay. So before we go, I have a few quick fire questions really quickly. What is the first thing you do every morning for your health? Well, I could have already mentioned it is honestly, I just say the name Jesus. Yeah. The so good. I and then I, and then I put a scoop of collagen in my coffee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What's your favorite health book? Um, None Like Him by Jen Wilkin ushered in so much freedom for me, specifically as a three. Mm-hmm. None Like Him. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll link that up in the show notes. Uh, what's one food you can't live without? Oh, how about avocado toast? Oh, yeah. And guacamole. So simple. And who doesn't love mm-hmm. guacamole? And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received that you want to leave us with? How about master the restart? Mm. It's always an option to yeah. master the restart. Yeah. Yeah. So good, Rebecca. Thank you so much for being here. You're such an encouragement to me. And I have been blessed to know you just in the last year that I think I, that I have. So um, thanks for being a friend and an encourager and um, just a light to so many people. So before we oh, go, thanks. can you tell us where they can learn more about you um, and kind of share what you do? Because if there's any local folks, they might want to check check out your work. Yeah, yeah. So I work at Veritas Church in Iowa City, Iowa. And um, I spend a lot of my time writing Bible studies and teaching um, local women. So you can follow along with um, our podcast, Veritas Women, um, and also find our Bible studies on our website, veritascommunity.org. And I will make sure and link all that up in the show notes um, and share that so people can dig in and learn more. They are fantastic. So you're going to want to check those out. So Rebecca, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay, I just have to stop for a second because I feel like Rebecca said something that was like so pivotal, I think, for threes. I mean, I'm not really a three, but I think that this is golden, what she said. Threes, you need to learn to preach to yourself before you listen to yourself. Like, talk to yourself first before you listen to yourself. And I thought that that was so golden just based on the knowing of what an Enneagram 3 is. It's very working to achieve outward appearance and acceptance from other people, to be loved for doing things. Um, But really, 3s, I just want you to know that you are loved not because of anything you do, but because of who you are and whose you are, as Rebecca added. So think about these things. Take this practical advice, and I hope that you can put it into action in your life. If you need a little extra help doing this, I've broken down some very practical steps and tips that you could add to create these nourishing lifestyle rhythms, what we're going for here in the Enneagram series. Because what I want to break free of is the diet chains and these strict rules and regulations that we think that we have to follow in order to achieve something. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't let your true self out, you will never stick to anything long-term. Like it will always bring dissatisfaction. So at some level, I wanna get to the deep parts of who you are and let that be expressed in these nourishing life rhythms that just create health. Threes, you have so much going for you and you have so many great strengths that you can utilize. You're super disciplined and goal-oriented and you, in general, don't have an emotional attachment to food. So we have to utilize these principles in order to achieve the healthiest version of yourself. But if I can redefine health for a second, it's health is not just a measure that you achieve. It's not a bar that's set. But health is a willingness to grow and to learn and to expand throughout the course of your entire life. And so we just got to get on the journey and be willing to stay on the journey in growth and learning and diving deep about who you are. So if you want to grab that handout where we talk about things like redefining your view of success and incorporating healthy principles into your exercise and diet program, head on over to the show notes at simperancewellness.com backslash 186 Also, don't forget to check out Rebecca and what she does. She has so many great Bible studies. Like if you just want to learn more about God and who he is, check Rebecca out. You can find more about her over in the show notes. And I link up all of the work that she does. She is really fantastic. Okay, next week, we're coming back on the show with Enneagram Type 4. And I have another interview with another one of my best friends. I can't wait for you to hear this. I'm getting out of my comfort zone now. Like I knew a little bit more about ones, twos, and threes than any other type on the Enneagram. 
So buckle up because I'm going to learn just alongside of you. So stay tuned for that and I will see you back here next week.